Hi friends, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri Appellate Attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Here's what we're discussing today. Due process takes a lot of time. We're going to talk today about the YSL trial, but I want to try to give a little background before I get into that. Every trial that goes on in this country is subject to a requirement of due process. And there are two kinds of due process. There is procedural due process and there is substantive due process. Procedural due process looks at the way procedures are followed in a case. Substantive due process looks at whether or not the trial as a whole substantively was fair. Substantive due process has received very little attention from the courts in recent years, and it's sort of thought of as a dead letter, really, when it comes to uh, dealing with cases involving uh, the issue of due process. But procedural due process is very important. Now, I'm going to talk about the kind of case that I'm most familiar with, which is a medical negligence case or like a nursing home case, which basically involves nursing negligence, a sort of subset of medical negligence. In those cases, the plaintiff goes first, just the way the state goes first in a criminal prosecution. In a medical negligence case, the plaintiff starts off and usually starts off with the victim or the surviving partner of a decedent and they try to get some emotional testimony in to get the jurors on their side. And then over the next couple of witnesses, you will get pieces of information that provide some degree of input into what happened and what the central issue is in the case. It depends a lot on how complicated the issue is. So, for example, in a fairly simple case, for example, uh, a nursing home resident who they don't put the bed rails up, they fall out, they break their hip. That's a fairly simple case to, to put on. It probably doesn't take more than three days for the plaintiff to put that case on if it takes that long. But, for example, where you have uh, a cardiac issue, where you have uh, an in-depth internal medicine issue, a failure to diagnose, for example... There is a lot of teaching that has to go on for the jury to understand what the concepts are. And of course, most of that teaching is done through the plaintiff's expert witnesses. Although, frankly, sometimes one of the lawyers that I've worked with will put the defendant on the stand as the second witness and, in his way of speaking, punch the guy right in the face. In other words, the first question he asks is, why did you screw this case up so badly? And of course, he draws an objection for being argumentative at that point. But at that point, the gauntlet has been thrown down. The doctor is ticked off. He loses the calm and cool that he had before he sat down. And inevitably, he makes a mistake or two while he's testifying. I could write a book on trial strategy and tactics in medical negligence cases. And, and a lot of it has to do with simply knowing how to put the case together and get it in front of the jury. Well, there are literally months and months of work before you get to that point. You've taken depositions. You know in depth what somebody is going to say. When you put that doctor on the stand, for example, in the case in chief, you have his deposition. And so the way that works is you bring him up and you say, isn't it true that on January 4th, you did not draw a blood gas. And he maybe he says, I don't remember that. So you whip out the deposition and you say, all right, I'm going to hand you a copy of your deposition. I want you to look on page 16, on line 14, and follow along. And then you read it. What did you do? Well, I can tell you what I didn't do. I didn't do a blood gas because it wasn't necessary. Did I read that right? Yes, you read that right. Having seen what you, what you testified to in your deposition, do you now recall that? Yes, I, I now recall that. And that's an important part of getting, to, getting the information to the jury. So it takes a while to do that. It might take two to three hours on direct exam to get this stuff in 
because you have to ask open-ended questions on direct, just the way the prosecutors do in the YSL case. They have to ask open-ended questions. What did you do next? What happened next? Tell me what you saw. Where were you? What happened? Those kinds of questions do not suggest the answer. Now, every, every person that you put on is subject to cross-examination. So, usually when the doctor gets finished testifying, having made a few flubs, the defense attorney will get up and say, well, you know, you, you said the, generally said that the patient was a smoker and deserved what happened. Is that really what you meant, or, or did you mean that, you know, perhaps he could have taken better care of himself? They will always try to rehabilitate their witness through cross-examination. So in a complex medical negligence trial, it could very easily take you 20 to 30 trial days to get through it, and that would seem like a really long trial to the jurors, and by the time you get to the end of the trial, the jurors are having trouble, because many times they're not allowed to take notes, they're having trouble retaining what was said at the beginning of the trial, because now you're at the end of the trial, the defense has gotten all of their licks in, the plaintiff maybe came back with a little rebuttal, but not a whole lot. And as a result, it, it can be quite a, uh, quite a time-consuming effort. But it is nowhere near what they're doing here in this YSL case, this RICO case, because it is definitely hard to manage. And because everybody gets a chance to object, the prosecutors can object to the cross, and, of course, the defense can object to the direct. And every time there is a substantive objection that hasn't been covered previously, they have to send the jury out. They have to discuss it. The judge makes a ruling. They bring the jury back in. I am sure that sometimes on, on a big trial like this YSL trial, it must feel like they're on a treadmill that runs a loop. You go back to the jury room, and then you come back. You go back to the jury room, and then you come back. It has to be terribly frustrating for the jurors, particularly given how long this trial has gone on just to this point. Now, one of the reasons why they selected a whole slew of alternates in that case is because they knew this trial was going to take time. And now it looks like it's going to take even longer. Let's listen to a little bit of the discussion that was held yesterday in the YSL case. And as you're probably aware, yesterday in the YSL case, it was all argument, and there was no jury there because they were deciding legal issues, and the judge was ruling. However, I am going to apply 24-6-611, because that gives me broad authority to exercise reasonable control of the presentation of witnesses and evidence to avoid needless cons consumption of time and other things. So... So in that event, what I am going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to initiate the following and I'm going to put it in an administrative order. And here's what I'm going, here's what I'm going to do. On Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, we're going to start at 845 and reclaim a little bit of time. So if you need to take up anything, we'll go ahead and take it up before a jury gets here. Um, that's number one. There's five things I'm going to implement. Two is going to be the exclusion of any evidence, documents, or or pictures that weren't that aren't timely disclosed. So, defense, if you argue that they're not that they haven't been timely disclosed, it will be the state will have to tell me what date and and did you disclose that particular evidence or discovery in the same or substantial format that you that it was given to the defense. So because what I'm having is I'm getting well the state changes it or expands it or just comes into possession of it. So if it's been if it hadn't been disclosed already, you tell me for example, we gave that state we, we gave that to the defense on April the 15th of 2023. And you can show me that it has been, in fact, filed that day, then we'll, we'll, we'll proceed. If not, I have remedies. The remedy, I'll exclude it. 
or I'm going to excuse the jurors on the spot and we're going to, we're going to, they're going to come back the next day and we're going to work to resolve that. But I'm not going to have them sitting here every day. And then they're going to, you know, of course, make, make certain judgments for themselves. I'm not going to say anything, but, um, I told you that the biggest thing that jurors complain about is having us to sit back there. Um, also, if it's, um, so number two is, is, is I'm going to start excluding stuff that if it's changed from discovery, hasn't been disclosed in discovery or, um, I'm going to reserve the right to, to, to go ahead and exercise that remedy at that point in time. So, um, defense, if you have, if you're going to make that argument, you need to be able to tell me what's changed about the particular evidence. If so, um, because after the state tells me, okay, well, we gave it to you on the 23rd. Well, then, okay, then you have to be able to tell me, here's what else they gave me. So I may just exclude that portion of it. So I'm going to start just excluding stuff in that respect because it's not timely. But who, so whoever the proponent of the evidence or, or asked for the exclusion is going to have to, is going to have to tell me, well, when did you disclose it? And, um, and in what form did you exclude, disclose it? So, because this is why I've told you all, get together earlier, talk to one another, and if you have problems, then certainly your issues I need to resolve, file a motion, let me know, so I can go ahead and take it up. But I'm hearing about it a lot of times, the first time when the jury sits in the box. And I can't do that. This, it's not fair to them, not fair to, 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 to me as your trial judge to be able to rule on those kind of things. Um, so related, number three is I'm going to start... If appropriate, and I do need to take up something that is of that important or import, I will go ahead and excuse our jurors and just we'll, we'll, we'll take whatever and you'll, we'll, we'll come back the next day. So that's three. Number four is I have spoken with our sheriff and consistent with the court. If I need, if necessary need be, we'll start having court on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Well, that's my, that's my call. So if you don't want your Saturday and Sunday sucked up, I think we need to work a little harder in terms of being able to streamline, and that goes to both sides. And, and look, I don't want to work that way, too, because it, it, it's me and my staff and my team and the sheriff and his team and everything else. But we will do it because we're going to have to recap some days. I don't want to be in 2027 trying this case. Or as Mr. Steele said, I want to be here next Super Bowl trying this case. I'd like to have it. <laughs> I'd like be able to watch the Super Bowl without any, without having to, to, to come back to try your case. I hope that, I hope that your case is resolved by that time, whatever, whatever may happen. But I, I think that we can do a better job at presenting the evidence and, and streamlining whatever to, 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 for the fact finder to be able to make a decision. Let me say this about the judge. I think he's very good. I think he's very well read on the law. I think he's handling the majority of these issues correctly. I am sure at some point he's going to have a misstep. I haven't seen one yet. I might have ruled differently on several of these motions. It's a good thing I'm not a Georgia judge, I guess. Uh, but just because I would rule differently doesn't mean that the judge is wrong. It just means that we have different perceptions of how things ought to go. And of course, his perception counts and mine doesn't. So I want to make sure that everybody understands I am absolutely not criticizing the judge here. In fact, I'm praising him because he's thinking of the jury. He told the lawyers yesterday that the jury hates being sent out of the room. Um, I told you that the biggest thing that jurors complain about is having us to sit back there. The other thing that I like about this judge is that he's very careful of making a record when he is making evidentiary rulings. It is sometimes very difficult for an appellate court to uphold the wise use of discretion of a trial judge when the trial judge does not make a record or does not allow the lawyers to make a record about what was decided. So let's watch him go through this with the attorneys in the YSL case dealing with uh, basically the admission of a rap song. The claim is that 
this rap song is essentially a confession to certain dirty deeds done dirt cheap. And the plaintiff wants to keep it out on the basis that it is more prejudicial than probative. And of course, the state wants it in because it believes it's more probative than prejudicial. So let's see how the judge resolves that issue. After giving careful thought and consideration to um, the aforementioned motions, uh, the court rules as follows. Um, it is the court's opinion that the, the defense's reliance on Baker uh, is in fact uh, is also limiting and is fact specific and uh, in regards to um, the facts that, of this case and, and at hand. In Baker, the, the enumeration of error was the trial court abused its discretion of 403. In particular, the court failed to do a 403 analysis um, and much differently than this court's analysis, this court did a fairly um, exhaustive analysis as is contained in uh, its order um, of 11-27-2023. Given the facts uh, that are distinguishable and the court, in for, since the court in fact did an exhaustive 403 analysis and also the independence of, of basis of its, of, of its admissibility, uh, I believe that, that the, or the court is of still the opinion that um, Baker, although uh, good law, is, is, uh, does not apply at this point in time to the facts and circumstances of the matters involving Mr. Williams as well as Mr. Stilwell. Um, I also, uh, the court's also considered in this distinguishing of Baker, um, in Baker, the Georgia Supreme Court explicitly stated the lyrics have no bearing in our con conclusion of rap, that, that the rap music video was improperly admitted. Um, in this case, the court is preliminarily subject to foundation uh, and the state's proffer that the, these particular statements are admissions of a party opponent under OCGA 24-8-802 Delta to Alpha, adoptive admissions under OCGA 24-8-801 D2 Bravo, co-conspirator statements under OCGA 24-8-801 Delta to Echo, and statements against interest under OCGA 24-8-804 Bravo 3. Um, and also distinguishing in this case, uh, Baker was a single defendant murder trial. This is a multi-defendant RICO and, uh, and uh, gang prosecution. So um, there are differences in the factual predicate as alleged um, and as applied in, in Baker. Now, according to certain media reports, the judge says it's going to take six more months to try this case. And, it, and keep in mind, they went from having 700 witnesses down to having 400 witnesses, and now they're down to 200 witnesses. It is taking forever to get this evidence in front of the jury, which, of course, inures to the defendant's benefit in large measure, because by the time the prosecution gets through with its case in chief, I am fairly certain, based on the comments that I have seen on YouTube, that the jury is just going to hate the prosecution because they're taking forever to get this trial in. Now, it's a large and expansive RICO case. I get that. But this case could have been slimmed down a great deal without any loss of ability to get the job done. And I think a lot of that is just because lawyers particularly want to throw every dirty piece of underwear up against the wall to see what sticks. Now, interestingly enough, yesterday a motion was filed in this case asking to have the prosecutor testify in the case because she made statements during one witness's testimony. She, she brought stuff up that occurred in conversations that were never disclosed to the defense. So the only way to really understand what happened, of course, is to get her to testify. The judge hasn't ruled on that yet, I don't believe, 
But that ruling is going to be really interesting. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below, or you can email me at the address above. If you have a video request, please make sure to title it Video Request, so when I go through all of the emails, it's easy to spot those, and I can give those some priority. Again, thank you for being here. If you have the opportunity to do something kind for someone today, please take advantage of that, and then catch me down here at the beach again next time. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.